Okay, we need to have a conversation. Everybody needs to take a deep breath and we need to calm down. Oh my God! Okay, it's happening. Everybody stay calm. What's, What's the procedure, everyone? Calm. What's the procedure? Stay calm! Over the past few weeks, I've had a lot of people that watch this channel reach out to me. I've also had past clients reach out to me and a lot of people that bought real estate this year are worried. But I'm here to tell you today that it is going to be all right. And you know I'm a data guy, I like to look at the numbers and I'm gonna go over the market right now because I think a lot of people that bought maybe a property in February are looking at what's happening for sales on their street right now and prices are down, you know, outside Toronto can be 20, 30% from the peak of February. And I think a lot of people are starting to freak out a little bit. And I wanna bring a little bit of clarity and calmness to this situation and show you the data that like, what's the worst case scenario this could be? What's the realistic scenario? And what's the best case scenario? We're gonna get into all that and more in today's video. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, if you could do that, that would be awesome. We are so close to 5,000. Also, you guys keep smashing all the like goals we've had in the last few videos. First it was 200, then 250. So I'm going all out on this one. If we can get to 300 likes on this video, you would once again, make my day. If you are trying to make sense of the market, you can book an appointment directly with me in the first link in the description, a buyer consultation or a seller consultation at a time that works for you. Okay, so here's what we're gonna talk about today. I've had so many people calling me really worried about what's gonna happen and literally thinking of selling properties now that they just bought in February and losing hundreds of thousands of dollars on them. And time is your friend in real estate. I'm gonna show you three examples today. The three last times we saw dips in the market, how long it took for the market to get back to the peak when those people actually bought and what the realistic scenario is gonna be for everybody watching. Okay, so what we're gonna look at first here is the last two years of data and what it's comparing is February 2020 to February 2022. So it's showing all the GTA average uh, prices and what they've done over those two years. So uh, Graham Frescu, oh, sorry if I'm butchering that name from Metroland Media put this together and uh, Susan posted on Twitter and I got her permission to use it in this video. So thank you, Susan. and. Uh, Graham. So let's put this in perspective. Okay. The 40 year average in terms of price increases in the city of Toronto is about six to 7% a year. Um, that is compounding over time, not just on the money you put down, but on the total value of the property. And that's why it has been difficult for people sitting on the sidelines to save at the same rate the market is moving. Let's take a look at these different areas of the GTA and break down what happened. Now, Keep in mind, this is comparing February of 2020 only to February of 2022. So it's it's comparing the peak of the market versus a time in the market that was good, but nowhere near what was happening in terms of now, obviously. So Peel Region, Brampton was up 66% in the last two years. Started at just under a million, now at 1.6 in February. Whereas Caledon was up 95%. It literally almost doubled in two years. Like, that is typically 10 years of growth happening in a two-year period. So no wonder when we see rates go up and things change and the world opens again that you're going to see decreases from the peak of that pricing. Now, it, we can go through this entire list here. You can take a screenshot. You can take a look at it on your own. And, you know, York Region, we saw 78% in Aurora. You know, King City, 141% in the last two years. That's mostly luxury property and big acreages as well. But if you look at all these different data points, Durham Region, Clarington, 86%. Brock, 130%. But I want to pull your attention to Toronto. So Toronto West was up 38% in the last two years. Central was up 37 and East was up 48%. Now, those are all very much above what the 40 year average is. But comparative to the outer markets, and we've talked about this a lot in this channel, Toronto growth was actually, and like I'm putting quotations here, somewhat reasonable in the last two years compared to everybody else. And obviously the reason why is because Toronto prices were already significantly higher um, when the pandemic started and when people started moving outside and saving more money and getting different lifestyles that the city was never going to see that type of growth. So when I look moving forward here from the peak of February before the rates went up, um, yeah, these outer markets that doubled in two years will have corrections. Like that's just a fact. But if you were a buyer that bought in any of these outer markets in the last two years, I want to show you the actual data and give you kind of an understanding of like, okay, well, how long 
based on the fundamentals of the market will actually take for you to get back to that price. So we're gonna move forward to the next graph here. And what this is, is the historical sale price data from the Toronto Real Estate Board, basically going back all the way to 1976. Okay, so we're gonna use three examples here to show people that bought at the peak and what happened and how long it took for them to get back to it. And I wanna make something very clear as well. Um, Canada is not limiting immigration. Although interest rates are going up, they have to go up. So at some point they can bring them down again. And unemployment rate is very good. Like the fundamentals of the market are still strong. But what we saw the last two years was absolute insanity. So we are still technically in a seller's market just based on months of inventory. But we've swung so quickly here that expectations are going to have to change. So let's say you are someone that bought a property in 1989 for $273,000. Two years prior in 87, the average price was only $189,000. And then things fell off. We had the crash of the early 90s and you have to go all the way to 2002 to get back to $275. So people that bought in 1989 that held for just over 10 years got their money back. Now again, this is average price and, and the micro markets are different. So take this with a little bit of a grain of salt. It depends on what you bought, where you bought and what exactly you paid for it in 89. But the average, it took just over 10 years to get back to that point. So anyone that bought in 89 and sold before 10 years probably lost money. Immigration, interest rates and many other factors were very different back then. And I will say on the record here, I definitely don't think that's what's happening with our market, um, but we will see corrections. So that was the worst we ever saw in the last 40 years. It took 10 years, okay? Just give that perspective. The next time that we saw the market kind of shift was 2008. Now, 2008 was interesting because although uh, America had their housing crash, Toronto specifically didn't actually see prices go down. In fact, they went up $3,000 from the year before and the year after they jumped up again. But what you see happened here in 2007, we had 93,000 sales and then we only had 74,000 sales in 2008. Then it jumped back up to 86. So it wasn't that prices dropped here, just people were nervous and no one was selling properties. And people weren't giving properties away either. So 2008 was kind of like a blip for Toronto real estate. It kind of paused, but our prices didn't actually drop. The most recent example is 2017. And when we look at 2017, our average sale price was $822,000. Now keep in mind, this is entire GTA. Now, if you bought a house in Durham, in 2017 and then fair housing came in in april of that year and foreign buyer tax and a laundry list of all the other things that the liberal government at the time in ontario brought into place and then the stress test came in early 2018 on january 1st all these factors saw housing prices drop anywhere from 20 to 35 percent in durham region so we've seen this recently and from then it basically took from april 2017 until about almost the end of 2019 into 2020, like early 2020 for people's prices to jump back up. But if you had bought a house at the peak in April of 2017, you would have still, if you had kept it and sold it at any point in the last year, you still would have made a ton of money. So I'm just trying to put this into perspective here that time is your friend. So if I look at where the market's at today and the fundamentals of it, I don't think this is a late 80s crash as much as many people probably want that to happen. And sadly, how the YouTube algorithm works is you put scarier thumbnails, you put scarier titles and more people click on your videos. And, you know, I'm a part of the problem, I think, but I try to be more reasonable about it to get you to this channel and watch these videos. But don't fall into this mindset. Okay. So so the late 80s was the worst, 2008 was a blip, and I think more realistically, how this is going to play out was what happened in 2017. I think it's going to take, you know, a little bit of time here, years, for prices to catch up to where they were in 2020. I don't think the city of Toronto is going to take as long as outer markets, because they haven't increased like outer markets have over the past few years. And that kind of takes me to my next thought process here is, you know, well, where's the opportunity? There's a really famous uh, Warren Buffett saying that a lot of people were quoting at the beginning of the pandemic was, you know, be fearful when others are being greedy, which I guess you could say was the last two years in real estate, and be greedy when others are being fearful. So there's always opportunities. Even in 1989, like I just showed you, when the real estate market crashed, still 40,000 properties sold that year. 
People need to move in every market. No matter what is happening with interest rates, their life makes them move sometimes, right? There's different things that happen in life. So what I want to show you next is, well, well, where does the opportunity lie? And, you know, I've thought about this a lot here, and I want to give you a perspective coming from me. So this is what I'm going to be doing this year. So I'm going to sell one of my condos this year because I want to sell it. I want to cash out. I want to have the money in the bank. And then I'm going to wait for the next few months and I'm going to buy a house because I want to buy a house uh, in the next few years anyways. But just where I think prices will go in the city of Toronto, it's going to cost me more in the next few years. I'd rather just get it now and take the equity out of this condo. And I'm doing this because the upper echelon of the market, housing, uh, you're going to see bigger drop-offs because it's all percentage-wise. It started at higher prices. So for move-up buyers, I think there's a great opportunity right now. It was really tough when houses were moving at the same pace, if not faster than condos or townhouses, because it's like, okay, well, even if my property went up this amount, houses went up this amount, but it started at $1.5 million, I started at 800000 Percentage-wise, it was hard to catch up. When markets stabilize or drop, it's a good time to move up if, and this is a big if, if you believe in the fundamentals of the market. I believe immigration will continue to be strong in Toronto. I believe interest rates will still relatively historically be low, right? And I think unemployment's going to be low as well. And those three factors are what it's going to help me make my decision. So I'm going to sell a condo and buy a house this year. I'm a, I'm a move up buyer. Okay. And I think there's a major opportunity for lots of move up buyers this year because percentage wise, that property that would have cost you 1.5 million, maybe now cost you 1.3, but your condo that you could have got 800,000 for in February, you can only get 770,000 for now. You get what I'm saying? Good opportunity for move up buyers. I want to know what you think though. Like, am I way off on this? Did I do a good job explaining it? I, I really hope I did because, you know, I don't want to stoke the fire here. I don't want to fear monger. Um, I don't think that's good for people's health, frankly, and just sleeping at night. And yeah, if you buy real estate, there is risk. And the next few years is going to show the amateurs from the professionals. The professionals are going to hold it. They're going to hold long because, I mean, I know I keep saying this on my channel, but it, it takes sometimes people just to hear things over and over again to, to understand that when they're ready to actually listen to it. And I think, yeah, if you buy real estate, you hold. You only sell if you're going to buy again, unless there is a life situation that forces you to sell that property. Um, the last thing I wanted to chat about with you today here is actually Instagram. So I realized that I've been you know, super active on, on YouTube recently over the last year, and I put all my long form content here, but we do a ton on Instagram. We're very active on it. We're actually almost at 10,000 followers. So maybe you could be number 10,000. That would be pretty cool. Um, and we put a ton of short form videos, educational content, all of our listings on there. So if you want to kind of follow us more along on a daily basis, make sure to check out our Instagram. Thank you so much for watching this video. This is a little bit longer, more just a conversation between me and you to understand that the market's going to have fluctuations. It should. Uh, the price growth that we saw over the last few years was never going to last forever. And what's happening now, honestly, over the long term of the market is good. We need a soft landing. We do not need a crash landing. Soft landings are going to be okay. And if you buy and hold and wait it out, historically puts you in a good position. Thank you for watching this video. My name is Tom Story. And remember, home is where your story begins.